I linked up Albert Tuanjiku Kandie, who is the founding director of Oridi Events Limited, a leading events management company providing event planning services for local and multinational brands, including Google, Microsoft, and Facebook. Wanjiku is a certified event specialist, having received her certification from the University of Cape Town. She currently is pursuing her master's in creative event management from the University of Falmouth in the UK. Hello. Hi, Wanjiku. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. How Karibu are you? Doing? Sana. Sante sana. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Karibu ni sana. Thank you. Yes. So here's Zach, I was telling you about. Okay. So Zach runs about five. Okay. He's into events, he wants to be as successful as you are. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. now I'm taking you up to him. Uh, okay. So that you can you can teach him some lessons on okay. how exactly it can be like already. Okay, so uh, thank <laughs> so you. So leave Zach. you guys to have a conversation and yeah. then I'll see you guys later on. Okay, oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Zach, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Karibu. Um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity uh, and spending your time to accommodate me here. Um, I think I'd love to know how you started first of all and what was the inspiration behind your, your starting out in events. Okay. Yeah. So I started 12 years ago, that's um, in 2007 and I started when I was in Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. So I was pursuing actuarial science as my undergraduate and the reason why I started is because I had this challenge of trying to figure out what I do with like my creative skills. Mm -hmm. I'm a creative at heart. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity presented itself for me to start my business. Um, and my first investors were actually my mom and my sister. Um, and yeah, that's how I started. So 12 years ago, our first business was a wedding and events directory mm -hmm. called waridikenya.com that failed miserably. <laughs> But it opened an opportunity for me to get into this um, event planning space because from the website I was able to get brides and grooms who are interested in coming to plan their weddings in Kenya mm -hmm. and that's how I actually got into the event planning space, particularly okay. wedding. Starting out as a student yes. to uh, this particular point, mm -hmm. I think just run me, run me through the points of when you incorporated new people okay. in your company, okay. either, either as partners yes. or as... Um, as uh, employees okay. and how that process was for you? Okay, the first people I incorporated into the company were of course my fellow business owners. That was my mother and my sister because I needed some capital when mm -hmm. I started. It wasn't a lot in today's standards, but I just needed that financial boost. So there was the element of them coming in and getting a certain percentage of the shareholding. It worked out very well because I mean, um, borrowing money from your relatives is different from borrowing money from a bank. From a stranger, so yeah. that was one of the things. Yeah. Um, I believe I got my first employee, I would say probably um, seven, eight years ago. Um, and that was after trying to figure this thing out. We started with an intern, and from an intern we got, um, we call them um, assistant event planners. These are people who come into the business to help us do projects. And we grew slowly. Right now we are still a very small team. Um, believe it or not, we are seven in the business, a core business, with a management of three business owners. And we have like a part-time, um, part-time employees is a team of like 34. So we are very big on keeping um, our business lean. Because that was a lesson, one of the biggest lessons I learned. There's a time we had really, really expanded and the profit and loss statement was not making sense because we had huge operational costs. We had good revenues, but we're not running profitably. So we decided to adapt a very lean model and that includes also choosing the sort of clients that we serve. Um, talking of clients again, I think that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, what are they looking for? What are the corporate clients and the multinationals looking for in terms of uh, someone to work with them on event or an event basis? I think for that I lean on our USP. Um, one of the reasons and where one of the, the things that led us into getting into this corporate space was the ability to understand their brands and translate that into an event. Actually that's how we got our first corporate client. The ability to understand who are they um, as a brand, who do they look like and how is that translated into a brand? Because at that particular time, there was a lot of this photocopying thing. So you'd find um, everyone, all the brands had the same um, events, drips, etc. Et so for us, it's the ability to understand their brand and then translate that into an event. That said, I think for clients, the most important thing they look at is value. Mm -hmm. As an event planner, what value are you bringing to my events? Is it the way you organize the logistics? 
Is it the way you pull out the budget in terms of making sure I get the most out of my simple budget? Mm -hmm. Is it the way you plan the event and the event runs? So also those are elements that they look at. And you'd find that a lot of corporate um, clients are willing to work with someone who can almost become like their partner. Mm -hmm. So you find for them <coughs> moving is not, is not every day. It's not mm -hmm. like... Um, uh, um, uh, other industries where the turnover for, for clients is high. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to provide value, they will definitely sit down and send you up as their right. event planner. And stick around for, and stick around for, for a long time. long time. Yes. Okay. For me, I'm like, you just need to take care of them and they mm -hmm. will take care of you. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I want you to, I want to split this into two. Mm -hmm. um, first on sponsorships okay. and then on partners partnerships, basically. Okay. So have you interacted with the, with the sponsor? Mm -hmm. How did you, how how is the process of getting a sponsor on board a project, um, and now on partnership? Mm -hmm. If you work with partnership, mm -hmm. how is it, and uh, what was the model of the arrangement that you worked on? Okay, I will speak of both of them as one because mm -hmm. we do have uh, partners who have been our sponsors for our events, mm -hmm. um, in particular people within the event space who have come, and we have a client who probably has problems putting together the event budget and they want to bring it down and we go to our partners who are vendors and we request for them to give us either a discount. I would say just like the same way you handle client relationships, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's what does a partner or the sponsor see in your event in terms of value and um, you need to learn who they are and what is important to them. So for example, for a sponsor, it could be what is important for their marketing strategy mm -hmm. and probably are the people who are coming for your event aligned to that particular marketing strategy. For the partner, it's you know how, how does this relationship work? A lot of our vendors have actually started with just applying to the point where when we are doing an event, we call them to give us either feedback or tips on how we can do the event. So it's how do you grow that relationship? Because mm -hmm. for me, I think it's very relational for both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, just concerning also your growth, uh, the growth of the company. Yes. What would you say was the tipping point that yeah. set you apart from um, were really just events, and then now it's were really events? What What was that? Mm -hmm. That one gig or one yeah. particular move that changed the game for you? I think for me, it wasn't a gig. Mm -hmm. It was actually going back to school mm -hmm. and learning about events. I know, I know, we can debate. There are people who are multimillionaires. You can talk about the top companies in the world are led by people who do not go to campus. But for me, I really value education because I think when I look at my journey, it's at the point where I went, because there are two things. Mm -hmm. There's how you, how you run the event business and mm -hmm. how you do an event. Mm -hmm. When I started, I was really good at the doing the event, but I was not good at running the business. And it's until I went back to school and I started educating myself on simple business practices, you know, what you'd find in an MBA. That's when I could see the tipping point. I came to appreciate the value of having governance, um, having um, board put in place. So those are some of the things that I learned from school that I never used to take seriously. The importance of having a business plan, having a strategy, how you handle all the different facets of the business from finance to HR. I could have learned those in the business, but it would mm. take much longer. So for me, I think learning yeah. in school helped yeah. um, develop a TP point for me. Not as surprising. Okay. I know it's a sensitive uh, uh, topic or something to talk about. Yeah. How, how do you, how do you, what, what guides you? When you when you're rating a client and when you're when you when you're putting a price a tag on what you, yeah. I would tell you this is still um, a struggle in the uh -huh. industry, and I think um, we have an association called EMAC, um, mm -hmm. Event Managers Association of Kenya. And that's one of the things that they're trying to figure out in terms of how do we standardize pricing because our industry is pretty young and we're still grappling, especially when planners grapple with this as opposed to people who have like tents, because you know a tent is so easy to price. Mm -hmm. But as we're really the things we look at is, we look at one, the scope of work. So we have a way we break around the project, so mm -hmm. able to tell what the client expects of us in terms of tasks. We also look at the size of the team, mm -hmm. um, how many event planners will be on the project, um, how, many, how big will the team be, will it be five people, will it be two people, we look at the experience of the team because we, like any other profession, we have like assistant event planners, we have lead planners, the lead planners tend to be more experienced. So we also look at who in the team is going to take part um, in that particular event. We look at the duration of the event. Is it a one day event? We look at guest capacity. Is it a hundred people or a thousand people? Because of course it takes more people to manage a thousand people. What we over the years we've decided to do is develop a pricing system internally 
that helps us now put all those factors together. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it comes up with like an hourly price. So we look at the number of hours a project will be and multiply that by the price, and there we get our figure. Um, thank you for, for sparing your time. Thank okay. you. For, I think I have a lot of insight I'll put in place. Okay. And, um, yeah, just thank you. Looking yeah. forward to even uh, maybe creating a relationship and yes. more and more, learn more from you. I want to be with you at the top. <laughs> yes. We will be together at yes. the top. Yes, yeah. I want to be with you there. After meeting out with uh, the business coach and Wanjiko Kandie, I've learned about uh, setting up the right structures for your company just to transition you to greater heights and uh, developing a very good uh, company culture to work with your colleagues and work with your partners in the company. When you, when, when you guys meet me later on, a couple of months later on, I'll probably have implemented a couple of things I've learned from, from her. Thank you so much for having watched the show. Hope you've learned a thing or two about the event business from the conversation between Albert and Wanjiku. And right now, you at home can either go out with a start or grow your event business. Please follow up the conversation on social media. The handles are actually running below the screen. And also remember each and every Wednesday to grab a copy of The Standard to read my article on The Hustle magazine. My name is Ian Dennis and this has been The Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their business.